What's up, family? Another tragic story of a young black man being killed. This time, New Orleans rapper B.T.Y. Youngin. Now, this guy was found over the weekend dead at a Shell gas station. Police found him laying next to a pump. They don't know what the motive is. They don't have any suspects. Now, there's a lot of speculation out there because this dude did have a troubled past. You know, he had a record of drugs and even played down from an attempted murder to uh, manslaughter a few years ago. So some people are speculating that maybe his past caught up with him. I do know this, New Orleans is a very, very small city and way too small to think you can pop somebody and not run into them in the future. Now, Birdman, uh, who owns the company that BTY Youngin was about to sign to, made a statement. Cash Money Records, Birdman, y'all know. So this is what Birdman said. You have to leave the neighborhood totally, talking about New Orleans. You have to become a different person. The city is so small and it's so hard for some of these guys to do that because it's so small. So Birdman is basically saying, man, when you're trying to become somebody, you're trying to do something with your life, you gotta get out of New Orleans. Because basically what he was alluding to is that it's a lot of people out there that don't wanna see you making it. It's just people that have a very, very low respect for life. Now, some people say, well, why? do they have to bring up the criminal record? Because that's what's out there in the reports. They're talking about his criminal record. And from the initial report that I saw out of, the, out of uh, a news agency in New Orleans, I didn't think that they were trying to bash the guy. I think that they were trying to paint the complete picture of who he was and showing his evolution. The guy had a track record. You know, if you commit crimes, then that's going to be part of your history. And I think that they were trying to show how he, uh, you know, started off in the struggle. You know, he started off, you know, he had a criminal record, he, drugs, attempted murder. He cleaned his life up and he was on his way. He was about to sign a major record deal. He was on his way to becoming somebody and making his mama proud and making his whole hood proud. And another sad thing is this, y'all. He left behind a six-week-old baby, I believe. It's a small child. He was 27 years old. I mean, just tragic all the way around. But back to the criminal record, I think that they would do him a disservice by not bringing up the criminal record because it shows a person who may be still in that lifestyle that if this guy can get out, I can get out. Now, he didn't get all the way out. He was almost there. But I think that it does a disservice to, to him, his family, his friends, his fans, and even people like myself who come from the struggle but who's had to face adversity and had a troubled past. You know, I think it's important to tell that story because it shows that people can change and people can grow. Um, so I don't think that people should try to make too much of that. Now, I do know how the news get down. I know how they get down. As soon as somebody black get killed, they always trying to figure out a way to blame the person that got killed for being killed in the first place. It's a classic case of blaming the victim any time a black person gets killed. I mean, they had to do something. He must have did something. Again, we really don't know exactly what happened. For all we know, he could have been ambushed uh, for a robbery. We don't know. We can only speculate. But his friend, one of his friends by the name of Mr. Mina, this dude said that 
he thinks it was jealousy because he was having some problems with people on the internet, especially Instagram. He had to block several people that was hating on him. His mama said it was jealousy also. So, you know, it's, it's, it appears that the guy had enemies and, you know, they caught up to him. Now, a reoccurring argument every time black people kill each other, a reoccurring argument is New Orleans and other major cities with a high concentration of impoverishment. They need to bring jobs so that these young people can sustain, sustain themselves so that they can take care of their basic needs, you know, food, clothing, housing, all of that good stuff. It's saying these companies need to do better. The government needs to do better. Give people jobs and they won't be out here committing these crimes and, and things of that nature. I get that to a large extent. But the flip side of that coin is that no company is going to bring jobs to a city full of unskilled workers. And if they do, the skilled workers are going to follow and get those jobs before any unskilled worker. So y'all got to keep in mind, see, I can speak like this because I come from that. I know. If I was somebody who ain't never did it, who ain't never been there, you can say, man, shut the fuck up. You don't know what you're talking about. I know what it takes. I've been there. So before anything happens, before the police can pull you, pick you up and put you in jail, the judge can give you 50 years, before you can end up in these prisons that they're building specifically to railroad and house and work like slaves, black, young black males, a crime has to be committed. When that crime gets committed, who is responsible for that crime being committed? See, to start talking about impoverishment and jobs and all this stuff, that's really to take the responsibility off the killer. We got to we got to go and call it what it is, man. We got to take responsibility. Any youngsters out here listening to what I'm saying, fuck what your homeboy talking about, cause he ain't talking about shit. He don't know what the hell he talking about. He's saying what he think he need to be saying, or he repeating, he regurgitating what he think is popular. I'm gonna tell you what God love and He love the truth. I'm gonna tell you what I know, what I experience. I'm not telling you something I heard. At the end of the day, you're responsible for your actions. These judges don't give a damn about how you grew up. They don't care about your daddy wasn't there, your mama beat you, your next door neighbor was an alcoholic. They don't care if you was abused sexually, emotionally, mentally. They don't give a damn about none of that. All they know is that they got you in front of them. And if you're in front of them, you must have did something. And they are going to try to hang your ass. Now, if you know those traps are out there, it is your job, it is incumbent upon you to avoid those traps. Many of y'all listening to this video are very, very sharp. Y'all know what time it is. But... People tend to relax their sensors when it comes time to act, to respond appropriately. We tend to just say, you know what, I'm going to do this here, and then, oh, got caught up, damn, now. And most of the time, we ain't even got the money to pay for a lawyer. You know if you ain't got no lawyer, your ass is double out of here. You out of here. If you know those traps are out there, you got to go in a different way. You got to go in a different direction. You got to go in a different direction. If 
a damn bear witness a bear walk right into a trap and get his leg caught. And he see that trap. He see another trap right next to it. You think that bear gonna walk right into that damn trap? Man, I don't give a damn what's inside that trap. He not gonna walk into it. Animals are often has more sense than human beings have. You can't allow yourself to walk into those traps. Years ago, uh, they were saying that, you know, rock and roll was a big thing. It was, it was a detriment to the community. It was a detriment to the youth. And as soon as you say rapper, everybody says, ah, oh, yeah, that rap music. Ah, oh, man, yeah, that's that. Listen to what he's saying. Listen to what they're talking about. It's the rap music, the rap music. You know, they said the same thing about rock and roll. And if J. Edgar Hoover would have had his way, Elvis Presley would still be in jail and there would have never been a British invasion. But that's cool now. And all I'm saying to you is that I would tell you this. And I'm not being biased because I make the music. I'm telling you that seeing is believing. And I've seen movies that has a whole lot worse than some of the things that I've heard in music, that I've listened to in music. I see. And people go on across stages and get awards for this shit. It, it's celebrated. Oh, it was great. You see all that blood? Man, it was so realistic. Oh, did you see they killed 200 people? In the movie, man, it was, it was so realistic. They dropped the bomb. Man, they dropped the nuke and it killed so many people. It was so realistic. We got to stop looking for these excuses, man, and just start taking responsibility for our own actions. At the end of the day, it's each individual's actions. It is the individual actions of lobbyists and people that are in Congress that has America in the shape that it's in. It's the individual actions of Donald Trump that makes people think that it's okay to hate, talk down on the mentally uh, uh, challenged, uh, people with special needs, to uh, grab women by the you-know-what. That's cool. The president said it was cool. I bet you if you did a check right now, I bet you sexual assault has gone up in this country since he's been in office, or actually since he's been running for office. Yeah, it's the individual, man, because I lived overseas and those people were a lot poorer than America. And those people did not kill each other. They were not killing each other. They were way poorer than we are. It is the person. It is how you're raised. It is your moral standard, your conduct. That is what determines how you're going to be and how you treat human beings. It ain't how much money you got. Believe that. And I'm going to tell you something else. At the end of the day, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. And I suspect that whoever killed Dude, whoever killed B.T.Y. Youngin, they'll likely die by the sword also. And, and I'm going to tell you this too. I was the same way for a minute when I was younger. When I first got into hip-hop, man, I couldn't wait. I was on tour, and I couldn't wait to get back to Houston to do a drive-by. You can't have it both ways. You got to decide. You're going to be over here, or you're going to be over there. You can't have it both ways. That's why Pac is not here anymore. That's the truth. That's some truth for your ass. I'm just telling you what it is. You can't walk with God and hold the devil's hand. If y'all like the videos I present to y'all, Make sure you go visit my Patreon page, patreon.com Willie D slash patreon.com slash Willie D Live. Join the movement. No more talk. What, what the haters talking about? Yeah. Order, Texas.